what's going on everyone if you're what's going on everyone welcome back to the channel if you're new to the channel my name is akeem haynes i'm a two-time olympian olympic bronze medalist author motivational speaker and sports commentator on my channel we talk boxing mma track and field and of course motivation and encouraging content if this is something that you enjoy then i hope that you subscribe to the channel now let's get into the video anthony joshua versus jermaine frank lynn anthony joshua is back in the ring this weekend but there's a lot at stake here, right? A lot of changes in Joshua's life inside and outside the ring. New trainer in Derek James, trainer of the year, Derek James. Let me put some respect on his name. So we have to keep that in mind moving forward because, you know, with new training group, new trainers, you know, sometimes it can click right away or it needs a couple fights for it to be solidified. So we aren't sure what this version of AJ is going to look like just yet inside the ring until he steps inside the ring. Not to mention, he's coming off back-to-back -back losses to Alexander Usyk. And you could see in his last fight after the loss, I mean, he was hurt. Like, it really hit him to his core, right? So there's a lot of questions around AJ. And this isn't a fight that he's going to be it's not just going to be an easy fight for him to, to just walk over Jermaine Franklin. We saw what Jermaine Franklin did against Dillian White, and many of us thought that he won that fight, including me. And I like Dillian White, right? But Franklin showed when given the opportunity, he's going to make it count. <laughs> so let's get into it, man. Let's start with AJ Anthony Joshua. 24 wins, 3 losses, and 22 wins by way of knockout. I feel like a lot of people have mixed feelings about AJ and his career. Some say he's overhyped. Some say if it weren't for his power, he wouldn't have beat half the guys that he's fought. But personally, I like AJ, right? I think his resume is solid. He's got wins over Dillian White in 2015, Dominique Brazel in 2016, Klitschko in 2017, Takam in 2017, Joseph Parker in 18, Pavetka in 2018, and of course, avenging his loss to Andy Ruiz in 2019, Kubrat Pulev the following year. He's a competitor and doesn't seem like he's a guy to shy away from fights. Like, if it makes sense, obviously, it's always got to make sense when you're risking your life. He is going to make it happen if it makes sense. He could have made excuses and not fight Alexander Usyk and fought someone else. And then when he lost, he could have made, he, he could have took a lesser fight to build that confidence back up before he stepped into the ring with Alexander Usyk again. But he didn't do that. He came and walked in the fire to try to win his titles back. So I respect AJ for that. Now, he's taken some recent risks, right? He's moved to a different country, sought out a new trainer to integrate into a new culture and way of thinking and of doing things to get his career back on track. And you have to respect that, right? AJ is in a tight spot because this is a fight where he has to stop Franklin or he has to dominate Franklin and win in convincing fashion. And he absolutely can do that. But let's go back a bit. I remember when he fought Andy Ruiz for the first time, right? Like when he lost. To me, the biggest thing in that fight was that AJ didn't expect Andy Ruiz to be as good as he was, right? When you got stops over some of the top guys and former world champions, you're expected to be able to just impose your size and your frame, and you kind of lean on that. And I don't want to say he was looking through Andy Ruiz, but it, it, I don't know if he was taking him 100% seriously. I don't know if he was all the way there and ready for adversity against Andy Ruiz because he dropped Andy in the third round with a left hook from in close and it seemed like it was only a matter of time before we see AJ does what he does best and that's close out the show when he's got his opponent hurt. It's no secret that AJ got power and he's accurate when he does connect. AJ's at his best when he is moving like the bigger man, right? Using his strength and his size like bullying guys. And often, right, when he is imposing his size and bullying the guys in front of him, they often fold and succumb to his style. But not Andy. No, no, no. Not Andy Ruiz. Andy Ruiz, the first time, decided to stand there, fire back, trade shots, stand his ground, and clip AJ and hurt him in the same round that he got dropped in. Because AJ, you know, he was overly aggressive when he did have him hurt. He tried to close out the show. Anybody would try to do that, right? But if you're trying to close out the show and you're not being defensively responsible or respecting the other guy, there's a good chance that you leave yourself open to being countered. And who knows where that counter shot could hit you? 
because Andy Ruiz hit AJ in the right spot and it was rocky from then. AJ just looked like he lost a little confidence in himself in the fight as it was going on. A little doubt crept in because he kept the distance after the knockdown, right? And tried to box his way back in and didn't and and it didn't really work out for him, right? You could see Andy was confident and had all the momentum and he took advantage of it in that fight. Now, in the rematch, Ruiz added a bit too much weight, which made him slightly slower. And AJ was more composed, prepared for the fight. He didn't look past Andy Ruiz. He stayed present in the moment, but he was extremely focus. He was dialed in. And that's how you want to see a fighter respond after a loss. I'm about to make my point just here. Let's keep going. So he goes to fight Alexander Usyk, a guy who moves much better than Andy Ruiz, right? Usyk has great footwork. He's accurate. He can be frustrating to fight because he moves so well in the ring, right? From the head movement to the foot movement, it, it's just excellent across the board. But he does that for 12 rounds. You get guys who might do that for the first half of the fight and fade on the second half. You may have guys who have to warm up into the fight, but Usyk does that for 12 rounds from start to finish. He's an excellent, he always comes in in excellent shape. And sometimes Andy doesn't always have a gauge with this conditioning very well. But at the same time, when you have power like AJ, you always have, as they say, a puncher's chance. And in both fights against Alexander Usyk, the outcome was similar. It looked like it was just a continuous, consistent fight from round 1 to 24. The second fight picked up from where the first fight finished. But AJ did better in the second fight. He was much more aggressive and landed some good shots on Usyk, but ultimately lost the fight. Stylistically, Usyk is just not a good opponent for AJ, but he was better. He was more focused. He was more dialed in. He was better coming off a loss. AJ tends to slow down a little bit, but Usyk doesn't. AJ doesn't have the best footwork, right? AJ doesn't always cut off the ring as well as we know that he can, right? He couldn't slow down Usyk, that moving target. But my point is that he did better the second time around. He came back after a loss and gave a better showing. And that's what I'm expecting against Franklin, a better showing. But again, I hope we get a mix of old AJ with the addition of better footwork and transition in, a, in and out of his punches and combinations. More combination work. Again, after losses, he typically comes back better. And so we'll see what type of AJ we get inside the ring. But let's talk about his opponent, Jermaine Franklin. 21 wins, one loss, 14 wins by way of a knockout. He's a good mix of a guy who has good pop in his shots, but also a guy who can box, right? I was very impressed with his performance against Dillian White, and we thought that he won that fight. Let's be honest, no bias, like come in and watch that fight unbiased, come in, watch that fight on mute, and just go off what your eyes can see. Jermaine Franklin won that fight, but we can't go off that, right? Because it is what it is. Dillian White got the outcome, and he got the win on paper. But before they even step into the ring, you look at those two resumes and Franklin hasn't fought the caliber of guys that Dillian White has, right? So a lot of people were saying, man, Dillian White's going to sleep this guy in under five rounds. But that was far from the case as we saw, right? Franklin was confident from the jump in that fight. He didn't force the fight. He took what was given to him and he stayed patient and didn't try to stay in the center of the ring where Dillian White could tee off of him. He would jab and step, jab and step, quick counters, quick combinations to the body. Those are the type of things that frustrate guys who like to fight in from in close. Man, they call Dillian White the body snatcher for a reason. And to hit the body, you got to be in from close. And I thought Jermaine Franklin did a great job of keeping it a distance and not allowing Dillian White to just have his way and impose his frame. Sometimes you have guys who go into other fighters' backyards and they get intimidated, but Franklin, he didn't back down. The noise didn't get to him. The atmosphere didn't get to him. He just fought his fight. He was extremely disciplined and he was consistent throughout the fight. He came in in great shape, right? His conditioning didn't slow it down. I thought he was consistent from round one to 12. He just looked very composed and seized the opportunity because if he didn't seize the opportunity or didn't put up a good showing, he wouldn't have gotten this fight with AJ and it probably would have been Dillian White. So you know he's going to come prepared, right? And he can take a shot as well. He landed more shots on Dillian White, right? And it was just a shame how the judges scored it. Sometimes you step in a ring with a guy, man, and 
they are a lot better than you anticipated. And so now you're like, man, I, I got to make some adjustments here. And Dillian White, I don't know how much years he has left, but he is not Dilly, he's not the Dillian White of old. So I thought the adjustments that he was trying to make, it was a lot tougher for him because his body couldn't really put him in those same positions as he once could. But again, it goes to show, man, just because you may not have heard of someone from a worldly standpoint does not mean that they can't come up and rise to the occasion. But again, Dillian White was at home and he had the hometown crowd. And that's really, in my opinion, what got him the win. And again, I like Dillian White, but I just thought they should have went the other way with the decision in that fight. But I don't think AJ will take Jermaine Franklin lightly, especially after Franklin's last fight, right? Because if he does go into that, it's, it's going to be a longer night than he would like it to. And, and Franklin can outbox and frustrate AJ. But I'm expecting Franklin to come in and put on another great performance. And he's going to make sure he seizes this opportunity again. So who wins? Okay, so while Franklin isn't Usyk, right? He's not going to be a stationary target for AJ to tee off of either. AJ is going to need to impose his size, yes. But he can't go in reckless just swinging. Otherwise, you know, Franklin is going to counter him as he did Dillian White. You know, not to mention it was a quick counter hook that hit him in the side of the head by Andy Ruiz that knocked off his equilibrium and AJ really found himself in trouble. So not saying that's going to happen, but it definitely could. It's a fight. Anything can happen. But it's also going to be tough to beat AJ at home. And AJ is going to come in with a purpose. He's going to come in to try and get the stoppage. He's going to try to come in and get back on the winning track, especially on his home soil. I'm not sure how he's going to win, though, right? Because I'm not sure what, what he's going to look like. Stoppage with AJ is always a good outcome, right? That's always, a, that's always a pretty safe bet. But with a new trainer, it could take a few rounds for things to really click for him to find his groove. Maybe it could happen round one or it could happen round seven, eight, nine, right? And we saw the resilience that Jermaine Franklin has. So decision wouldn't be a bad one either. Right. So I don't know how it is going to play out, but I do have AJ winning this fight. I'm hoping he can get the stoppage, but I have a feeling as well, too. This one could go 12 rounds, but I have AJ winning this fight. What are your thoughts on this fight? Who do you have winning? Let me know in the comment section below. If you would like to support the channel, there's a couple ways you can do so. You can like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you would like to support by way of donation, you can find options in the description below. Also, my Cash App handle will be on screen as well. Any amount goes towards the growth of this channel and will be greatly, greatly appreciated. So with all that being said, if you've been watching the video this on, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel and we'll definitely see you next time.